Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 14 of SBR today we are going to go through IS 24 related party disclosure now let me tell you the importance of the standard in your SBR exam related party disclosure is a question which always comes in your SBR exam right it always comes like the frequency of this question appearing in your exam is very high okay that means you definitely 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 need to know the standard see there are some standards which are which always comes like group accounting questions then we have conceptual framework then we have like this is24 related party disclosure then there are some standards which sometimes it comes sometimes it does not come like the frequency is medium and there are some questions like is 41 agriculture and all which the frequency of coming is very low okay but that does not mean that you don't have to study all the standards you need to know all the ifrs and is standards in sbr okay but more attention and more focus needs to be on those which you know are definitely going to come now pick up any past paper you will see a small portion of it is on related part mostly mostly this question comes in your ethics in your ethical question in your question number two you will see a part of related party there that means a case study will be there relating to related party okay so here basically you need to know what you need to disclose why you need to disclose second what is a related party you need to know who are related parties and who are not related parties both and number three then you need to disclose so these are the three areas that we are going to cover in this lecture first we are going to finish the all the lecture okay then we are going to do all the questions at the end so you have to watch this uh, video till the end to follow the, up on the questions starting with first one the need for disclosure see what is i uh, related party transaction related party transaction is like any transaction that you do between two parties it could be transfer of resources it could be transfer of services it could be transfer of product anything between two parties okay the thing is the parties are related we'll see what related means okay between related parties regardless of whether a price is charged okay it is a transaction between related parties regardless of whether a price is charged you can either charge a price you or you don't charge a price you charge very high price or you charge a very low price it's up to you you can manipulate the prices here can you understand this is the reason why we need to disclose because having transaction between two related parties is very normal i mean you will come across a situation where you will be dealing with related parties right but the thing is issue here is why you need to disclose it because users can easily get manipulated users of the financial statements they need to know these transactions why because this is that area where they can prepare of financial statements can easily manipulate and hence users are at a disadvantage if they do not know about the related party transaction because through this you can easily distort your financial performance and position of the entity so in order to protect the user okay rule has been made which is under is24 it says you need to disclose if there is any transaction between related parties if the transaction was between not a related party it's okay it is not a very sensitive issue but the issue comes when it is between two related party therefore we need to know what is a related party first for example okay let me take you through this let's say company a has 75 percent shares in company b okay so company a is now selling to company b first understand company a is a subsidiary because it is owning more than 50 percent more than 50 percent means they are having a control over b a is having a control over b that means a is the parent b is the subsidiary so in this case a is selling to b and a is selling to b at a price that is significantly above the market rate what happens because of this company is making profit which normally they would have not made that much profit if they have, would have sold it to a third party but now because they are selling it to b that is their subsidiary they can easily change the price so hence they are having a higher profit so in companies a financial statement okay profits are very high so if you have to compare this with the similar companies 
for the potential investors it will not show the true performance you see so in this case what can you understand a and b are related they are related models so users like banks investors they need to be made aware of this relationship this transactions which is happening between a and b so that users can properly assess the financial statement this is the reason now we are coming on to the most important part definition of related party okay so related party a related party is defined as a person or an entity c it could be a person that is related or the entity that is related it could be any of this two a person or an entity that is related to the entity that is reporting the financial sorry preparing the financial statement let's say i am preparing financial statement and you okay who is watching this you are a person or you are an entity okay so you are related to me then you are a related party you understanding so any person or an entity that is related to that entity which is preparing the financial statement that is known as related party but this definition is not enough for your exam we have more detailed uh, definition that you have to know you have to memorize this okay so these are the rules that you need to memorize it whether a related party is existing or not a this is regarding person b will be regarding entity okay so a person or a close member of that person's family is related to the reporting entity if that person is this is this number 1 if that person has a control or a joint control suppose you or any of your close member has a control more than 50% share or a joint control in that entity reporting entity then you are a related party second significant influence over the reporting entity significant influence means more than 20 to 50% share that means they are an associate third member of the key management personnel like director executive director you know at big post not just an employee they are key management personnel they are key to it then the board okay so the member of a key management personnel of that reporting entity or of the parent of the reporting entity let's say you are the director of the subsidiary of a company still what you are related to the parent either you are uh, a member of the mem uh, parent of that subsidiary or in the subsidiary itself you are the member of the key management person in both ways they are related to each other now we are moving on to b b says this is regarding entity an entity is related to a reporting entity to entities how they are related if this conditions apply number 1 entity and the reporting entity are the members of the same group that means each parent subsidiary and their fellow subsidiary they are related to each other parent is related to subsidiary subsidiary is related to their subsidiary it's like that next entity is an associate or a joint venture of another entity okay or an associate or a joint venture of a member of a group of that entity both entities are joint ventures of the same third party you need to memorize these things and see which one of this is applicable in your case study understood to identify whether related party is there or not fourth one entity is a joint venture of a third entity and other entity is an associate of the third entity so that joint venture and that associate are related now still we are in the b entity supports employment benefit for the benefit of the employee of either the reporting entity or the entity that is related to the reporting entity if the reporting entity is itself such a plan sponsoring employers are also related to the reporting entity see this is regarding is 19 in is 19 we say that sometimes the benefit the one who is having the a uh, pension plan and all that company is separate from your main company the company where you are employed right so that company okay and the if it is for the benefit of the employee the reporting entity or the entity that is related to the reporting entity they are related i know this is little difficult to grasp at this moment but no problem no worries we have questions okay the more questions you do the more better you become in understanding these rules 
the entity is controlled or jointly controlled by a person that is identified in a a means all those parties that are related known as related in a we talked about person so you need to go through that list a again okay then same with this one a person identified as having a significant influence over the entity or is a member of the key management person of the entity entity or in any member of a group which it is a which is a part that provides key management to the reporting entity key management services now is24 also says this are not related parties this three number one if two entities they are having the same director or they are having the same key management personnel they are not related see they either need to have control either they need to have significant influence either they need to have joint control then only they can have they are known as related party if they if they just have the director in common that means one director is in both the entity same director those two entities are not related because they have the same director in both no or they have a key management person in both no second two ventures joint ventures just because they share the joint control of a joint venture the two joint ventures they are not related party just because they have joint control in one company no third a customer or a supplier are not your related parties you might say you are doing a huge volume of business with your customer and supplier still they do not become your related party why customer does not have any control in a business neither they have an influence neither yes indirectly you can say they have a control because if they decide to stop buying from you you are suffering a loss but still if you see in terms of shares they do not have a control they do not have more than 50 percent they do not have 20 percent of your shares neither they have any joint control in your company so customer and supplier are not your related party okay no matter whatever is the volume of the business even if it's just a one customer or even if it's just a one supplier they are not to be taken as your related party so please go through the list of the one a and b a is talking about the person who's related b is talking about the entity that is related to the reporting entity and this one this three are not related parties now we are moving on to the summary so this are your related party a parent is a related party to reporting entity fellow subsidiary is a reporting entity subsidiary is a reporting and uh, sorry related party associate is a related party key management is a related party and a key management key management of either the parent is also to uh, is also a related party to reporting entity key management to the reporting uh, reporting entity itself is also a related party both the ways now we are moving on to the close members of family we are talked about close members who are these close members whom do we take as close members of family number one that person's child or that person's spouse child and spouse children and spouse or children of that person's spouse dependent of that person or that person's spouse these three are known as close members of the family okay you need to know what control is all this while we are talking about control 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 what is control ifrs 10 has described what is control they defined control as these three things when an investor has a power over the investee and they are exposed to variable returns from its involvement they can affect the returns that they are getting through the power that they have over investee okay so in short control means having more than 50 percent whenever you see they are having more than 50 percent of shares of another entity control is there okay and wherever through share they for example they have not given you the percentage how many how many percentage of shares are they owning then you have to look go through these three points do they have do they have the power over the investee can they affect the return it will be given in the case study okay it will be given through that you have to see now we are moving on to significant influence significant influence means between 20 to 50 percent not less than 20 not more than 50 and it is dealt uh, according to is 28 investments in associates and joint venture significant influence means is an associate okay that means they do not have the control but they have the power to participate in the financial and the operating policy decisions of an entity joint control if it's a joint control okay it is defined in ifrs 11 that means they are sharing 
they have agreed to share among themselves okay and any decision how do you understand joint control is there when you see in the case study whether decisions are need to be made by unanimous consent of the parties or not you need the the, uh, the unanimous consent of all those parties who are sharing the control one party cannot decide no one person is having control of the other okay if there are three part uh, three people who are sharing the control you have to take the decision from all the three people if decision is required like that then it is meant said to be having a joint control okay now key management what is the meaning of key management key management means they are having the authority as well as responsibility for planning for controlling for directing activities of the entity see your employees who are at the lower level okay middle level manager lower level manager they are not key management personnel because they cannot control they cannot plan they cannot direct they just do what they are said to do they are not in the decision making process right key management personnel like executive director or non executive director they are known as key management person right of the entity now disclosure parent and subsidiary relationship see whenever there is a parent and a subsidiary relationship you need to disclose what is the name of the parent okay if there is an ultimate controlling party that is not the parent someone else that has to also needs to be disclosed now key management personnel when you are giving key management personnel that means let's say executive director their compensation you when you are disclosing it it needs to be broken down into categories these are the categories a short term benefit what is the short term benefit they are getting out of that total compensation you just cannot disclose their remuneration the total compensation no you need to break it down and give it in details out of that how much is the short term benefit out of it what is the pension benefit what is the termination benefit what is the share based payment scheme all these matters when it's an executive director not when it's an just an employee right why 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 it is so important to disclose it in sep separate categories for uh, key management personnel and not just for a uh, staff the reason is the reason is because key management personnel they have mix of uh, things in their remuneration package it's just not their salary and their package is very huge it's very heavy they have a huge salary so it's very easy for them to manipulate in this area by charging by giving themselves huge remuneration so if this is not broken down into different categories then governance will suffer we studied this under corporate governance in sbl you will know it in detail right corporate governance so in order to protect the corporate governance of the company you need to disclose it in separate categories because there are so many corruption that is going on so many collapses of the business collapsed why because this executive directors who are there in the power are giving themselves a huge compensation huge remuneration and no one knows no one notices anything before the company no one knows until the company collapses and the major reason is heavy remuneration for this executive director they take heavy huge bonuses for themselves which often goes unchecked that's why you need to break down to see whether it is reasonable in line with the industry or not okay next disclosure of transactions and balances this also needs to be there all these things needs to be disclosed what is the nature of the related party relationship description of the transaction amount of the transaction see most of the time any transaction that has been done between two related parties are of huge amounts because it's easy to manipulate as i told you earlier where a is charging a very heavy price from b it's easy to hide so that's why you need to check the amount of the transactions any amount that is outstanding allowances for receivable and irrecoverable bad debt expense all this needs to be there because this is the area which has a high risk in terms of audit we say this is the area of high risk so high risk areas often needs to be disclosed the disclosures will be more tough on this areas you understanding 
now we are moving on to government related entities whatever the disclosures we have seen till now you can easily exempt from it if if it is the government that is a related party to the reporting entity that means government is having control government is having joint control or significant influence over the reporting entity so if the government it's if it's a government related entities if they are related to the reporting entity they do not have to disclose all this they are exempt from it but on the other hand for this exemption they have to disclose other things what are those other things number one details of the government and their description of their relationship with the reporting entity are they the parent are they the subsidy are they the associate are they the joint venture who are they to the reporting entity needs to be disclosed second details of individually significant transactions see these transactions are not done in small small amount huge amounts that's why third indication of an extent of other transactions that are significant in aggregate see sometimes single transaction itself is not significant it's not material but when you join two or three transactions together it becomes material so if it has a nature like that when joined with aggregated with another transaction can become significant you need to disclose that as well so for garment related entities not those disclosure if they are exempted from it this three definitely needs to be disclosed you are not exempted from this three okay so that's it for is24 now we are moving on to the questions before i summarize is24 there are six test your understanding which we are going to do from one to six starting with test your understanding one group structure so you are given group structure like this okay now you need to identify the related party relationships with the above structure a p c and d how do you start start with entity a first okay whether entity a is related to b entity a is related to c entity a is related to d then start with b like that and then with c and then with d okay so starting with a okay tell me whether a has a a is related to b or not tell me now in other words c both entity b and c okay are they related to a if you see entity a has 60% in entity b and also has 70% in entity c so are they both related to entity a or not first it's entity a c both are having more than 50% that means a is having a control in b a is having a control in c also right so and if you see both entity b and c they are in the same group okay so both entity b and c are related parties of a why because entities that are within the same group are related to one another same group they are related to one another so entities b and c are therefore related parties of a b c are related parties of a coming to d is d and related party of a if you see c has 35% in d correct that means they for c d is an associate but for our thing is whether d is a related party to a or not we know it's a related party to c what about a d is an associate of c correct c is a member of a group okay so because it is a member of the a group d will be a related party of a can you understand if it's a member of the group and if that member has an associate or a subsidiary or a joint venture in some other entity even that entity becomes a related party to the original parent that is d is related to a so b and c so, but but 
the reason why they are related are different okay you just cannot say b c d are related or uh, this, this this are not related that is not what you are supposed to write in your exam you have to give reasons how they are related b and c are related because they are member of the same group both are an associate subsidiary of the a because member of same group both are subsidiaries of a d is related i'm only writing the reason for this rest on i'm not writing the answer because answers are there in your answer right in your textbook it's there so i'm just going to give you the reasons only for this i'm showing you how to write the answer okay d is related to a because d is an associate of c and c is a member of a therefore a and d are related same way you have to do for entity b like that you have to write with all the three of the c a c and d and then c then d okay now coming to entity b tell me whether we know a is related to b okay this both are related okay i'll draw everything now for a is done now coming to this we know this two are related you know this two are related because a is the parent of b right next what about c c is also related to b because earlier they were in the same group as a so they'll be related the two subsidiary are the subsidiary of a they are in the same group therefore they both are also related what about uh, b and d d is an associate of c we know that right but c is the member of same group as b c is the same group as the member of b therefore even d will be related to b okay so like that now i'll rub again and we'll move on to entity c tell me whether a is related or not in this case you know that all are related a is related b is related d is also related to c now we know the reason why because a and b okay they are in the same group entities that are within the same group are related to one another so a and b are related parties of c d is related because it's an associate of c okay now coming to entity d from the entity d's point of view a is so a is related how a and b we know they are related c is related because d is the associate of c correct what about a and b what reason will you give then the same group associate but they are also a member of the same group entities are related if one is an associate of the member of a group which are which the other entity is also a member even though d is the associate of c but that c is in the same group as a and b so a and b are related to d this is a little difficult to understand in the first instance but keep on doing questions like this you will understand now we are moving on to test your understanding too okay So test understanding to A B for each situation. Explain whether or not entity A and B are related. Starting with A and B. Okay, Mr. P controls entity A and is able to exert significant influence over B. Okay, for Mr. P is a related party. See, for P, A and B both are related party for P. 
because in one he is having a control that means subsidiary this is subsidiary this is an associate okay p so a and b what about a and b among each other are they related we know p is related to a p is related to b also what about a and b they are related why member of the same group they sorry you cannot say they are member of the same group sorry they are not two subsidiary they one is associate one is subsidiary but they have the same parent p is having a control in one and an associate so they both are related like that when one is the subsidiary and one is the associate of one person or one entity then they both are also related so entity a and b are related coming to here second in second both are associate so here what about it c mr p does not control a mr p does not control b also therefore a and b here they are not related you need to have at least control in one earlier you at least have control here and one associate so they both are related okay but here they do not control a they do not control b also so a and b are also not related if you forgot why you need to go through that list again and actually go through that list and see where that point comes now test understanding 3 discuss the related party relationship arising from the above structure mr p is owning a entirely b is a key management personal and that is owning c okay now tell me how is it here okay a is a related party of p because entire control is there b is also a related party to p because key management person is there what about a and b are they related yes because p controls a and is a member of key management personnel of b also so both they both are related what about c b controls c so b and c are related what about p and c p and c are they related yes how p is the sorry uh mr p is a member a member of a key management personnel of the parent of c who is the parent of c it's b even though entirely they are not having but because p is the member of entity b key management personnel so through that they are they are related to c also what about a and c wait i'll drop all this what about a and c are they related yes how they are related party yes a p controls a okay and and is a member of the key management person of the parent company c You understanding so they are owning this they are owning this okay and they also have a key management personnel p is already having in c okay why through b c p is having p is a related party to c because through b because for, because b is the parent of c where they are having key management personnel so like that through that relation a and c are also related because p is having in c also p is having in a also they are related p is a related party to a also p is a related party to c also like that a and c also related this is the structure now we are coming to test understanding 4 control here significant influence this is mr and this their spouse okay discuss the related party relationship arising from the above 
how do you discuss first understand they are mr and mrs t are close family they fall in the close family because they are spouse number one number two t controls entity a and mrs t sorry mr t controls entity a so therefore mr t and mrs t are related parties of entity a both this and this they are related parties of entity a because even if the spouse controls because this both are related the spouse they in the close family so miss so mrs t is also a related party of entity a you understanding so mr t and mrs t related parties of a okay whereas mrs t has significant influence over b okay so in that way mr and mrs both are related parties of entity b also in this case also both mr and mrs are related parties of entity b so a and b in that way are related because both control entity a okay and they have a significant influence over b therefore a and b are related parties now we will be moving on to test your understanding 5 and 6 test your understanding 5 so in this question you are supposed to discuss the correct accounting treatment in pictures financial statements for the year ended 30 june 2004 So this question is about Joel Smith, who has owned 60% shares in Picture and 70% in Frame. On 1st of Jan, Picture entered into the lease agreement with Frame. Okay, under the term, Picture would lease one of its unused warehouses with the remaining useful life of 20 years to Frame for five years. Okay, that means out of the 20 years, they are only leasing for five years. Now. Consideration is ten thousand a year in area, but if the market rents are hundred thousand per year, you see there's a difference. Now discuss the correct accounting treatment. How would you start answering this type of question, and from where? Suppose this question was given to you in your exam. On your SBR exam, how do you deal with it? Okay, so look at the keywords. Nowhere, no standard has been mentioned. Okay, sometimes in a question there might be two, three hidden standards. Okay, it's just not one. Just because we are going through related party, you might be thinking this is IS twenty four only, which is partially correct. IS twenty four is also there because we are doing that lecture. But there is another hidden standard, and the the and how do you look for it? The keywords. The keyword here is what lease, lease. So this is talking about lease agreement. That means how do you deal with lease? So which standards deal with lease? IFRS sixteen. IFRS sixteen. So this standard we have to talk about it. This is the starting place. first we have to talk about the lease then we have to talk about related party whether there is a related party transactions or not okay so let's okay so you can divide this in two paragraphs first paragraph talking about ifrs 16 how you have to deal with it and then is 24 okay so first paragraph i'm not writing the answer it's already there in your answer you can read your answers answers are there in your textbook okay but i will explain you how do you uh, approach this okay so ifrs 16 you first need to identify whether this lease see leases are of two types okay we still haven't finished ifrs 16 okay but uh, as you know like from your financial reporting also from your f7 
you know that I leases are divided into two finance lease and operating lease. So you start by saying whether this is a finance lease, this case study or an operating lease. Okay, so that should be your first thing. Now tell me by reading it, what can you understand? Is it a finance? You define finance list and you define whether it it falls into the finance lease or not. If it does not, then it's an operating lease. But tell me whether it's a finance or an operating lease. If you say it's a finance lease, sorry, if you say it's an operating lease, yes, you are right. Okay, answer is operating lease. Tell me why. Tell me two, three reasons. You have to give reasons. In the first paragraph, you have to explain it. See, finance lease means when you are transferring risk and ownership to the lessee. You are transferring all of the risks and rewards of that asset to the lessee. Are you doing it here? Is the picture selling it to the frame? Transferring risk and rewards? No. He is only leasing it for a proportion out of 20. Only for 5 years he is leasing. That means asset is still uh, in the hands of what? Picture, risks and rewards are not transferred to frame. It is still a picture is having the control. Only for the portion. Right? So number one is Reason why it is operating is only for a fraction. Only for a fraction of assets remaining useful life, the asset is leased. Small portion. Second, lease payments. Lease payments are insignificant second reason why it is operating because if you see okay they're just paying 10,000 a year there is the other uh, similar size warehouses it is 100,000 so even the lease payments are very insignificant right now what else? Therefore, because lease payments are insignificant and assets are only given for portion of remaining useful life, therefore it's an operating lease. How do you deal with operating lease? How should picture recognize? See, whenever you say, you have to name, mention the name of the company. Picture should do this. Picture should do that. Because the word says picture. So picture should recognize this lease income on a straight line basis over the lease term. What is the lease payment? 10,000. Okay. See the date very carefully. When did they go for the lease? 1st of Jan 2004. And they are asking for the year end of 30th June. That means it's only for 6 months. So this that means this 10,000 only for 6 months you have to take. So 6 months if you are taking for this 10,000 that means only 5,000 income you are each year you are going to recognize. This goes where? In your PNL profit and loss account all the year right so this is what you are recognizing in your profit and loss okay done what about second paragraph whether they are related party or not picture and frame you have to understand that so here it's picture here it is frame okay it is here it is john he's owning 60 here he's owning 70 percent you see they are both P and F, they are they they are having they are under the joint control of John Smith. That means John is having a control over P. John is having a control over F. Therefore, this both are related. Understanding? Their parent is the same. They are part of the same group. Therefore, they are related. So, because they are related, now you need to disclose any transactions which is done between PNF. So, this 5000 needs to be disclosed. Okay, next. See the rental income. Okay, it's very important. If you see it's 10,000, whereas normally it is 100,000 in the open market. So, to check whether it is in arm's length or not, 
just check in terms of percentage if you take 10,000 out of 100,000 it is only 10 percent you see the lease rent is 10 percent of the normal market rate so as such the disclosure note cannot state that the transaction took place equivalent to the arm's length it did not take place equivalent to the arm's length okay now we are moving on to test understanding six here this is a very common uh, way of asking questions on is 24 that is on ethics so discuss the accounting and ethical issues arising from the above a single investor has a controlling shareholders in both of the single investor okay they both are not within the same group towards the end of the reporting period Bed made a large number of sales to banger in excess of the normal selling price finance director Bed has not disclosed these transactions so there are two issues that accounting and ethical they are separate do not mix them together for accounting issues you are getting going to get separate marks for ethical issues you are going to get separate marks and remember in your sbr exam this comes in question number two and your ethical question has two professional marks also attached to it I think two of the professional marks are in question four and two are in question two and in question two has a question on ethics right so now this is a lengthy answer okay this is a bit long if you read the answer please make sure that you go and read the answer later on but how do you start approach this question where do you start there is no head and a tail of this so how do you start see all this okay take your time to structure visually how you are going to write first how are you going to start what is going to be in the middle part how many paragraphs and how i'm going to end it's very important because ethical questions are always uh, they have the similar pattern of answering okay even though the issue might be different okay first understand that your starting point should be whether they are related or not because if they are not related then they are not disclosing it is not an ethical issue but always there will be an ethical issue okay there will be so first understand both bathe and beggar are related parties why give a reason why related parties See your first paragraph has to be regarding what? Regarding IS24. Whether they are related parties or not. Why? Because they because the companies are under common control. They are under common control. Who is controlling it? A single investor. Controlling both. Because they are under common common control, they are related. That means all transaction needs to be disclosed now, right? So now we are moving on to the second paragraph. Okay. Here we need to talk about what we need to explain it in more detail accounting issues. Here we are talking about importance of financial statements. importance of financial statements to users who are the users you can specify the users like employees bank shareholders suppliers see this is very important for them so they are going to rely on this right that means you directors they they this groups rely on the directors to faithfully represent the performance and position of the company okay what is it faithful representation that means you have to talk about faithful representation you faithfully have to present everything then from there you lead to faithful representation faithful representation means what complying with accounting standards complying with standards in this case it is is24 the standard you need to comply with because if you do not comply with this you are not faithfully representing and if you are not faithfully representing then users will be manipulated okay you are distorting the performance understanding 
So it is essential that directors have to comply with IS-24. That is this. Otherwise, transactions between Birth and Bath and Banger will distort the performance. And finally, the last paragraph we are going to talk about ethics. We are linking it to ethics. All this while we are talking about IS-24. This is accounting problem. Now ethics. How do you start? So you start by saying that the finance director is required to adhere to the ACC's code of ethics. This sets out the importance of the fundamental principles. Fundamental principles. You have to mention this in your answer always. Any ethical questions needs to be answered. This five fundamental principles. What are these five? I'm not listing it down. Tell me. Objectivity, confidentiality, professional behavior, professional uh, integrity, and professional competence and due care. These are the five fundamental principles. Out of this, which one are you breaching? That you have to answer. Okay. So, finance director's decision will breach many of it. Why? Because they don't want to disclose. They do not want to disclose. So, by not disclosing which principle which they uh, will, uh, will they breach first. Because they told that they do not want to disclose this it's a related party transaction. It shows they are breaching their integrity. They are breaching it. Right? Now you can come up with more. How? By giving their motives. Why they might want to dis not disclose it. Okay? That means maybe they might have the motive to... Uh, they might be motivated by desire to meet profit targets or satisfy the bank. In this case, it's a lack of objectivity. And if the director are unaware of the requirements of IS-24, then it is a lack of professional competence. If they are unaware of IS-24, so this three are going to be breached. Confidentially has nothing to do with it. And the other one is what? Professional behavior also has nothing to do with this. These are the three areas that is going to be attacked. So this is how you need to answer ethical question. So that's it for this lecture. Now let us summarize IS-24. So IS-24, two things. Number one, the need for this disclosure is because users need to be made aware of this relationship. Otherwise, because if they are not being aware, they are going to be manipulated. Right? Because normally the related party transactions do not have do not happen at the normal market rate. That's why. Second, disclosure of related parties. Parent subsidiary relationships, who is the parent, the name of it needs to be known. Disclosure of the transactions and the outstanding balances and the key management compensation. You need to divide it in different categories. What is the short term payment? What is the termination payment? All those things. Now, thanks for watching and um, see you in my next lecture till then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed so that you get the notification of my latest videos